It's a little embarrassing to admit, but this scene always makes me cry. No! Specifically, it's exactly this moment. Come on, Spider-Man. Come on, Spider-Man. Come on, Spider-Man! It's not the only Marvel scene that hits me like that. This one does it too. What were you the god of again? A few months ago, I didn't even know why. I just knew that tearing up at a Marvel movie that I'd already seen three times felt kind of weird. Do you need a hug? No. No, I do not. But I've learned that when something moves me emotionally, so much that I don't even want to look at it, it's because it contains the seed of a profound truth. Without my hammer, I can't. So rather than avoid my embarrassment, I leaned into it. Are you Thor, the god of hammers? And I rediscovered a life lesson that we would all benefit of being reminded of. That hammer was to help you control your power, to focus it. It's never your source of strength. Because the moment that hits me is the moment the hero realizes no one and nothing else is coming to save them. I'm not as strong as you. It's the moment that they are forced to realize that the power that they need has been inside them all along. Come on, Spider-Man. No. You're stronger. You see, in life we project our power onto things outside of ourselves. With great power comes great responsibility. We can believe that it's our status. Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Or our body. I've got a really good body, so. Or our girlfriend. I love the Smiths. Or our business, or our accumulated stuff that makes us who we are, that gives us power. I'm the strongest Avenger, okay? So this responsibility falls upon me. And society can support that view as many people react primarily to those external things. You show me a pay stuff for $72,000, I'm gonna quit my job right now and I work for you. And it feels nice to have those external indicators. It feels so nice that we can put more and more attention into growing or defending those external things. You're all not worthy. I guess you already have a date to homecoming. Getting more recognition, more success, more security. Hey, listen, I quit. But as we put our attention onto the external results, we lose contact with ourselves. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. And after time, we become convinced that if we lose the thing outside of us, the status, the physique, the girl, the money, whatever, we lose ourselves. This is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. And it's at this point that the universe tends to do us an incredible favor that feels absolutely awful. I think we should stop seeing each other. It takes away the thing we've projected our power onto. Okay, it's not working out. I'm gonna need to. This can leave us feeling broken, robbed, and cheated. Maybe we feel that the one good thing that was gonna make everything in our lives work out is gone, and we can dwell on those feelings for a long time. That's metaphorically where we find the hero in those scenes that move them. They've lost the external. They're realizing that nothing outside of them is coming to save them no matter how much they beg. And yet alone, separated from the thing that he thinks that he needs, he digs deep and he finds himself. I'm really grateful for stories like these because they've helped me to learn this lesson before getting totally crushed under metaphorical rubble. You see, I noticed that as I became more successful and gained more external power, more status, more money, the less free I felt in many ways. Somehow, I felt more free when I was sleeping on the floor, $50,000 in debt, with no one appreciating my work, than I did after I'd covered my debt, had savings in the bank, and millions of subscribers who liked what I did. It was the opposite of how I'd expected to feel, but having something to lose allowed defensiveness to creep into my life. You're walking around like you've got can't lose cards. Suddenly, I felt the need to please the audience, to outdo the last thing I did, to live up to the praise that others were so kindly offering me. I just wanted to be like you. And I wanted you to be better. And I started to come unhooked from the inner creativity and freedom that was the wellspring of all of the external success. Yeah, 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 just looking out for me. A little guy. It became clear that if I continue to focus on the external, measuring it in views or dollars or however the heck status is measured, I was going to lose myself and eventually all the other stuff too. Maybe it's time to consider stopping. So I took a long pause. I focused on reconnecting with the internal parts of me that just want to create without any hope of reward. So are you okay? I will be. And in doing so, I feel like I found my way back to that wellspring. You look sharp. <laughs> So do you. Now, in doing this, I don't know if the next leg of my career will be as successful as the first. Releasing the insistence on external rewards can sometimes have me working on projects that don't have the highest chance of commercial success, like the D&D show that I spent a year making for a very small audience. I wouldn't care. I would still love him for the person he is on the outside. But I suspect that for you and I, maybe, just maybe, external success is an inevitable partner to internal alignment. No. You're stronger. After all, when the hero stops identifying with the trappings of success and returns to the center of who he is, the trappings often get returned to him, usually with an upgrade. When you're ready, 
Why don't you try that on? So the point of this video isn't to tell you to throw away everything that you've worked for or to encourage you to become a monk to find your true self. I fully support using all of the resources that the world affords you to their utmost. I just share this as a gentle reminder that if something can be taken from you, it's not you. And if you can lose it or you have lost it, it's not essential. And whatever you have going on inside of you right now is the source of your deepest power and your most incredible future. You just have to tune into it. I'm gonna do this all day. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.